Hey, shalom, shalom, most high Christ bless, most high Christ bless. Can y'all hear me real good? Sound good? Shalom, family. Most high Christ bliss. We're going to get started in a minute. I'm going to let more people jump on. I pray everybody having a good morning. Good start to the week. We're going to get started in just a minute. Just a minute. I'm going to give time for more people to jump on. We're going to get started. Make sure y'all sharing. Make sure y'all sharing this on your Facebook, social media. I guess we got off to a little late start, but we're going to make it do what it do. Our praises to the most high. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Man, I'm new to glasses, y'all. How y'all, how you drink coffee with glasses on? Every time I drink, first thing that happens, my, my lens is fog up. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, I think we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and get started. Hey, y'all, shout out to um, Sister Eliana out of Birmingham, man, for hooking up this, my Rams horn. I guess it's the, uh, I don't know, Kobe Bryant edition, the purple and gold. <laughs> but I'll praise this, man. This thing tough. Hit it up on Facebook. Should hook you up. All right, all right, all right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, send up these prayers. 
Brothers, make sure your head's uncovered. Sisters, make sure you cover your heads. Um, and y'all say the sound's okay? The sound's good? Y'all can hear me loud and clear? All right, all praise to the Most High. All right, let's rise and face the east. Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come to you this morning, first of all, thanking you, thanking you for waking us up, thanking you for allowing us to be in this truth, to understand your ways so we can keep your commandments. Most High God, we just want to make sure we're doing the things that's pleasing to you, that we may keep your commandments so we can make it into that eternal rest. Most High, we come to you this morning asking you to open up our minds, our hearts, to understanding, uh, to the wisdom of the scriptures. Most high God, we, we pray that you put your, your hands upon your anointed to keep them safe. Most high God, we ask you for prayers for our bishop, Bishop Nathaniel. Make, most high God, make sure that you continue to heal him and bring him back to us 100%. Most high God, we also pray for the other bishops, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, the brothers, the sisters, the mothers and the kids of Israel united in Christ and all Israel, that you keep us safe and preserve us to the end. Most High God, we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus of Christ. Amen. All right. All right. I'll praise to the Most High. I'll praise to the Most High, man. This thing all right right here. It's all right. All right. Sister, hook me up. All right. All praises to the Most High. Okay, so we're gonna get go ahead and get started. Uh, so who who all on here still on the on the um, on the high from the Passover? I don't know about y'all, but I'm still kind of Passover passed over hype, Passover hype. You know, um, that's the best thing about Passover, Tabernacles, all the feast days, all the events that the Most High God uh, told us to keep. You know, the best thing about it is that we get that spiritual boost, that spiritual awaken that we need uh, to deal with this captivity, you know, to deal with this captivity. Because, man, I'm tell you what, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. But to be around my brothers and sisters, to see hey, not just the brothers and sisters, but to see the kids, you know, uh, to see the young men talking about the scriptures, you know, to see the, the our young daughters in modesty. You know, dealing with each other righteously. Hey, it's a it's a great thing. Uh, matter of fact, let me read the scripture real quick before I jump into the class. Um, in Ezekiel. I'll read a couple of scriptures real quick. But uh this is Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter eleven. I got a um got a strive today. One of y'all that's spiritually hyped. Let's get on the uh, get on the ones and twos. Let's get some striving going on, because I know uh, I know people go crazy if they don't have a strive. Like who's writing down the scriptures? I didn't hear them say it. <laughs> but um, all right, so I'm gonna uh, start off uh, just Ezekiel 11 before I get into the scriptures. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God. Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I will be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So, you know, us coming together, that's that little sanctuary. You know, us congregating, being amongst one another, that's that safe haven, you know, that little, little small piece of the kingdom, a little taste of a kingdom that... um that we get to have here in this cap captivity. Uh, God knew that he was put us in this situation. So he gave us a little something. So them that's, that's practicing righteousness, keeping the commandments, guess what? 
we able to get that spiritual boost, that spiritual boost of Passover, tabernacles, you know, and, and so on and so on. Even even the Sabbath, the Sabbath is that spiritual boost. You know, I was talking to somebody and they were saying how sometimes they deal with depression, but, um, you know, that the only time they really and truly happy is when they get to come to the school, that Sabbath day, you know, new moons and things like that. So guess what? That means when we do come together, make sure y'all in the spirit, right? Make sure we in the spirit. Make sure nobody moping around and you thinking about your problems. We all got problems. Everybody got problems. I got problems. I got problems right now. Problems, problems, problems. But guess what? Hey, we're going we gonna to serve the Lord in joyfulness and happiness. That's the reason why he put us in this captivity. Because we didn't want to serve the Lord the right way. So he put us in captivity. So yeah. We come together, make sure we come together, everybody having a good time and we stay on 100, right? So, class this morning, this morning's class, um, put away childish things, put away childish things. Israel, it's time to grow up. We got to grow up, Israel. Uh, we can't, we can't be grown kids anymore. You know, we got to we got to step into that adulthood, that manhood, womanhood, things like that. We can't um, we can't be babies in this truth. And when I say babies in this truth, I'm not talking about the understanding. Right. I know that we're going to, you know, differ in understanding when it comes to understanding. I'm, I'm still a baby. You know, I'm still learning. I learn stuff every single day. But we talking about the other side. Right. We're talking about in our in our personal lives, um, things like that. You know, um, leadership, if you if you have been paying any attention, you know, leadership been bringing out classes, uh, trying to prepare us for the things to come. And and some people not prepared. Some people not prepared. Some people not even thinking about being prepared. Uh, some people still like, well, you know, I got time and stuff like that. We can't we can't think that way. The most High put the spirit on our leaders for a reason to bring out certain classes, to bring out certain understandings. It's not it's not for nothing that when I first came into the truth that this wasn't even spoken about for the most part. I ain't going to say never, but not like we speak about it now. You know why? Because we're getting close. We're getting close to the end. And the most high putting the spirit on our elders, our bishops, deacons, captains, even the officers to, to go through these prophecies about what's to come and to make sure that we are ready, right? So growth in the truth, right? You got different kind of growths. Growth. Uh, you got a, a mental, physical, spiritual, different type of growth in this truth, right? So that spiritual growth. In fact, let me read this real quick. Go to Romans. Romans 7. If you think about a spiritual growth, what are we talking about, right? It's the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. So we know when we talk about a spiritual growth, we're talking about God's law, statutes, and commandments. We're talking about growth when it comes to, to this Bible, the words that's written in this Bible. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, right? So we know that God's laws are spiritual. So when we think about that spiritual growth, what are we talking about? We're talking about, we got to make sure we believe in the things that's in this Bible, right? That we believe and take heed to the prophecies that's to come in the scriptures. And a lot of times our brothers and sisters, we're not taking heed to that, right? A lot of us sit back and and some people really just don't believe it, just to be honest with you. Some people just don't believe it. You know, we got to make sure that we take heed to these prophecies that's in the Bible, right? So let me read the scripture real quick. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Isaiah 34, 16. Let y'all get to it. While I set this desktop up. All right, that's a little better. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So first of all, to to try to for us to get a spiritual growth, we got to make sure we're reading the Bible, right? 
Um, you know, a lot of times I travel different places and things like that, dealing with other congregations. And, um, j you know, just this Sabbath, I was somewhere else, at another congregation. And I asked, you know, who had some questions? Who had questions? Everybody was just kind of looking, you know, brothers to get that look down at their Bible and be kind of like, oh, I got a question in here somewhere. Right. When you don't have questions in this truth, it's a dangerous place to be in because it's, it's letting us know that you're not reading and you're not studying. Right. You're not seeking out of the book of the Lord. All right, I'm going to hold that real quick. Revelations uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. Revelation 1 and 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So guess what? You got to make sure you're seeking out of the book of the Lord. You got to make sure you're reading. You got to make sure you're studying. Because if you're not doing that, you know, how how do you think you're going to grow um, spiritually? How are you going to get that spiritual growth? How are you going to grow up, right? How are you going to be able to put away the childish things, meaning that the childish understanding that you have? How are you going to be able to put that, put that away? You won't be able to do it if you're not reading and studying. And that's what we find a lot of places that a lot of people, you got a certain, usually a certain percentage of brothers and sisters at the school are actually reading and studying. And then a lot of people just kind of faking it. You know, you remembering precepts, uh, you know, you, you iron your camp pants and shine your boots real good. So everybody think you in the spirit, right? But on the inside, you really, uh, you know, you really like a Christian Israelite, meaning, you only really deal with your Bible on the Sabbath. Um, you know, and that's this is like the Christians. They wake up on Sunday morning, they grab their Bible, and they show up to church looking real good. And everybody think, oh, look, he's sanct she sanctified. He filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, you know. But really, you're not because you're not doing what the scriptures say to do. All right. So I'm going to go back to uh, Isaiah 34, verse 16. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None should want her mate. For my mouth have commanded and his spirit it have gathered. So it says no one of these shall fail. And what is it talking about? Same thing we just read in Revelations 1 and 3 when it goes into the prophecies. The prophecies. None of these prophecies are going to fail. So guess what? You got to make sure that you believe in these prophecies. A lot of I know growing up in the Christian church, church was just church. It was just a place to go. Nobody really. I know I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in um, the Bible. We just was there. You know, uh, on certain Sundays we got the little grape juice and the little crackers and stuff like that. But we didn't believe in the Bible coming into knowing who we are that the scriptures and the Bible and all this is just for us. The whole world was made for us. We have to, you know, we really have to take a better thought process in this thing right here. A better thought process, man. <laughs> just heard my door open. My rib must have just came back. I was about to <laughs> go Rambo up in here. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I'll praise it to the most high. I'll praise it to the most high. But, um, we really have to grow. We have to uh, we have to come back to these scriptures, right? We have to believe these scriptures. We have to, right? So um, the scripture says, "No one of these shall fail." We we'll go to First Kings eight. First Kings eight and verse fifty six. What is it talking about? What does it mean? No one of these shall fail. All right. It's the book of first Kings chapter eight and verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that giveth rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There have not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. So guess what? Everything that the Most High God promised, told us was going to happen, it's not going to fail. It's going to happen. 
And we need to recognize that. We need to recognize that. We can't just sit back and, you know, really play Israelite. You know, ain't no such thing as a halfway Israelite. All right, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Let's go more into this, these prophecies and what we have to believe if we say we are spiritual. We're trying to get that spiritual growth. You got a growth, a spiritual growth. Guess what? You got to make sure you believe in this Bible. So this is the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Right. That's what we have. We got a sure word of prophecy. We we can see things happening that's written in the Bible. We see it. Right. Our leaders, they come out, they teach us. Bishop Nathaniel went through the book of Revelation. Uh, Deacon Malachi, man, he go through um, prophecies like no nobody else. Deacon Arthur, I mean, I, all, all our leadership, they go through this Bible and they go through these prophecies. And where we can see, almost see where we're at today, where we can understand that this is real. Like this, this stuff that is saying is happening. We can see it happen. It's going to happen, right? So we know we have a a a, a, a more sure word of prophecy. We know this thing, unless you're not paying attention, right? If you ain't paying attention and watching what's going on, then you may not know. You may, you know, you may you may be celebrating. Uh, Easter this Sunday, you know, you may be getting ready to go on an Easter egg hunt or something like that. They're supposed to be having an Easter egg hunt in my neighborhood. I wish um, it wasn't on the Sabbath. If it was on Sunday, I'd go out there and maybe play some Israelite music or something. But whatever, run over the eggs. Or whatnot. So that's one thing we got we to gotta worry about, right? We got to understand that we know that these prophecies are, prophecies are real, right? It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein too, ye do well that take heed. So guess what? We got to make sure that we take heed. We take heed in these prophecies, right? We don't just sit back and listen to class and be like, wow, that's crazy what's going to happen. Then we sit back, change the channel, and we start watching um I don't know, whatever everybody watch. I don't even know what people watch no more. But we start just watching TV and we act like nothing's happening, right? We just like, hey, it is what it is. Hey, all praise. I, I pray that I'm I pray that I'm ready in that day of affliction. It's like, yeah, but are you getting ready? Are you doing the things to get ready? Or are you just sitting back and just chilling and just hoping that, you know, you know somebody else going to save you, right? It says, as a as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we understand that. These prophecies wasn't just made up by some dude, you know, some people just for some reason, people think that 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 some man just miraculously sat down and pieced together this perfect book of the law. And and now everything's coming to pass. And and, you know, hey, it's just a coincidence. Like, it's not a coincidence. The Most High God put his spirit on his prophets to put together this this book and to show us these prophecies. Right. So like it says earlier, it says, whereunto you do well that ye take heed. You got to make sure we take it heed that you're growing up. All right. Uh, this is John chapter 10, verse 35. Let's go there. John 10, 35. You got to make sure you take heed. Some of our people are not taking heed at all. They just sitting back and they just waiting. Sit back and waiting. Y'all think the scripture where it says watch and pray. I mean, you just sit back and chill. That's definitely not what it's talking about. All right. So this is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 35. It says, if he called them gods uh, to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Right. The things that's written in this Bible, it can't be broken. Nothing's going to come later and change it. You know, 
I was looking at a at a, a debate on um on Facebook, some guy that's always talking about the Israelites. You know, I don't know how people find the time, but some guy was talking about the Israelites and he was like, um, he's talking about well, uh, talking about the Quran and things like that. It's like, so you think God's gonna write a whole book from the beginning, show you the beginning, the middle, and the end, and then say, you know what? Uh let me write another book. And then show a different beginning, a different middle, and a different end. With I'm gonna use some of the same people in the book. That just don't really make any sense, All right? Don't make any sense. These scriptures can't be broken. Nothing else is gonna come later, and you're gonna get a different understanding. God's not gonna talk to you and tell you something that's not in these scriptures, right? We gotta grow up. We gotta grow up. Some of our people. Some of our people ain't, we bugged out, we ain't right. You know, we think that God's going to come and give us some some special understanding. And and that's what's going to, you know, that's going to differ than what's in the Bible. Well, seek out of the book of the Lord and read, all right? Don't be looking at the, I had somebody come to me and tell me they, they, that when they see all, a lot of, everywhere they go is a bunch of stars. So they know the most high is, is there. And, you know, then it was talking about, I don't know numbers and things like that. Well, on this day I was born on the fourth, so four, and then I was there for twenty days, so four and twenty, and and you know my uncle named John four, John four and twenty. That's like my favorite scripture. It's like no, hey, read the Bible, <laughs> read the Bible. It says the scriptures cannot be broken. So we gotta make sure we believe. We believe in these prophecies to come. But a lot of people don't believe at the end of the day, you know, like um, like the scripture saying Romans, I'm going to get that later. But a lot of our people do not believe. They don't believe the words of this Bible. They they want somebody else to come down and, and give them some type of sign or whatnot. But nah, the, you're getting a sign right now. You're getting a sign every single day. Well, we probably got 30 classes come out every day, whether it be. YouTube classes, uh, Daily Bread, you got the different uh, radio shows and different just regular classroom shows that come out from Israel United in Christ. Guess what? Those are the signs right there. Those are the signs, right? This Bible right here, this book, this book of the law right here. Guess what? It's signs all in there. You know, don't try and look for another sign. The scripture says that we always, our people desire a sign. All right. So, but the issue about belief you know, us not believing, that's not new. It's not a new thing. Belief has always been an issue amongst our people, even from the beginning, right? Even when it was in the wilderness, we had a problem believing. We we crossed through a body of water <laughs> being chased by the Egyptians where a man parted the sea <laughs> and we was able to walk through that sea. And then when, when we passed through, it closed it and destroyed our enemies. We watched that. We watched plagues, the um, the gods of the Egyptians, you know, just coming from the dealing with the Passover. We watched the gods, of, all the gods of the Egyptian, Egyptians be destroyed, right, by the Most High God. It made a mockery, a mockery of the gods of the Egyptians. We saw all these things. But guess what? We still had a problem believing, right? This uh, The book of Hebrews Chapter three and verse 16, Hebrews three sixteen. It says, for some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? So it's talking about the, 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 the men and women in the wilderness, right? It says, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So guess what? The Most High had to kill. He had to kill that generation of people because they did not believe. They did not believe. He made them wonder and wonder for, for 40 years in the wilderness because they did not believe. Right. He had to get to get rid of them. It's like, you know, what? I got to get rid of this generation. They don't believe. Like I said, I brought them. I brought them in. Guess what? 
I said, I made, we made the, um, you know, they, they was hungry. So I gave them food. I provided food for them. It's like I gave them angels food, as they call it, the, the holy manna, right? Like I gave them this and I made it taste like they wanted it to taste. It tasted the way they wanted it to taste. Like they would taste the manna. You had a taste for some, you know, some grits with salt and pepper, not sugar. You eat grits with sugar. You ain't going to make it to the kingdom. Right. I'm just saying. But <laughs> they he made it taste like they wanted to taste. So you woke up that morning. He's like, man, I really got a taste for the for some grits. And they, bam, tastes like grits. Man, you know, I really got a taste for a, a, a good burger. I don't know if they ate burgers back then, but whatever. You know, in this day and age, guess what? They it tasted like a burger, right? If it, like somebody had a sweet tooth, like man, I wish I had me a sweet potato pie. Guess what the manna tastes like? The manna tastes like sweet potato pie. But guess what our people did? They still murmured, they still complained, they was in slavery. They was in slavery. The most high got them out of slavery, and they still was complaining. They murmured and complained and complained and murmured to the point where even Moses got tired. He was like, Lord, kill me. Just just kill me. You know, get well, I don't know what I did to deserve and deal with these people. Just kill me. Right? Even he he lost his uh, he lost his place, you know, when he struck the rock. You know, so the people with these people, both I said, look, I got to get rid of them because of their unbelief. I'll read it again. It's verse 19. It says, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So there's always been an issue with belief dealing with our people. Uh, this is Mark, Mark 6 and 6. Mark 6 and verse 6, right? Um it says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. Christ, when he walked the earth, he was looking at us like, these, these people here, this, this is amazing right here. Our people don't believe. They don't believe. The prophets, they seen, they, they looked at us. They was like, what's up with these brothers? What's up with these people? They don't believe. It's not, it's not making sense, right? We, I think about that right now, just like somebody just posted about Clubhouse. We go on Clubhouse. Last night we was on Clubhouse. Uh, we was talking to these, um, I don't know, holy, sanctified, washed in the blood, spirit filled, you know, just pick pick a, you know, one of them Christian terms, uh, sisters. And we giving them scriptures that's in the Bible that says this, that, and the third. And they don't believe it. They just sitting back there going like, ah. Oh, you know, you ain't going to, you not you, you can't mute the truth. It's like, <laughs> y'all was speaking that Christian garbage forever. It's out there. It ain't, we ain't muting it. We standing up against it with what the Bible actually says, but they don't, they don't believe, you know, we go on every night for hours and hours and we pull the same scriptures, the same precepts over and over and over again. And guess what? Our people fight. They fight against it because they don't believe they don't believe right uh let's go to romans romans chapter 3 and verse 3 romans 3 and 3 it says for what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of god without effect so it's saying it's going to be people that don't believe right what what about those people that don't believe are they going to change the prophecies in this Bible. Nah, they can't change it. Because the scripture says, it says the scriptures cannot be broken. These prophecies is going to come to pass. It's nothing they can do. It's even dealing with you, you know, the, the brothers and sisters that are supposedly in the truth, right? That are supposedly Israelites, you know, and that, that's, that say you keep the commandments of God. Guess what? A lot of y'all don't believe. Y'all believe some stuff, but not everything. You don't believe everything you really don't believe, right? You don't believe that a famine is coming. Well, you don't believe it's going to be insurrections. Well, you don't believe that we're going to be uh, chased from city to city, that our house is going to be um, robbed and our goods spoiled from us. When you sit back and you just think that, you know, ah, you know, everything. OK, I got a nice little I live in a nice neighborhood. You know, it's. I got white people. He saw my neighborhood. <laughs> I'm going to be all right. Yeah, okay. 
When you don't believe these things, guess what? It don't matter. It's still going to happen. Let me read it again. Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Meaning, no, just because you don't believe, that doesn't mean it's going to stop the prophecies. You know, the most high, he working on his own time. He ain't on your time. He ain't, you know, he going to work on his own time. He going to do what he need to do when he going to do it. You know, it is what it is, right? Um, it says, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou may be justified in thy sins and might is overcome when thou art judge. So guess what? The prophecy is going to happen. How? As it's written. Just like the Bible say it's going to happen. That's how it's going to, that's how it's going to go down. Right. But, it, but Christ said he marveled at our disbelief, you know, not just, not just Christ. We looking back at some of the other, uh, other, the prof, other prophets. Guess what? They saw the things that we were doing. They was like, this don't make no sense. Uh, this is Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse, let's see, let's see, let's see. I started verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 5. It says, Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thy eyes now uh, the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far from all from my sanctuary, but turn, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. All right? So this, this is a vision that he's saying. He's like looking at and seeing the things that's going on. He's like, man, these people are crazy. Look at all these abominations being committed towards the most high, not just of them that are outside of the truth, but to our brothers and sisters that's in the truth. Right. It's because of that disbelief, that disbelief. Right. Um, you drop down to verse 13. It says, he said unto me again, turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. So our vision was always given to our men, our prophets to see into the future. And when they saw into the future, they saw us and was like, I don't, I don't understand these people. Right. Christ looked up. He was like, man, I just, I just made a dude walk. What's going on. Right. I just healed. This person was sick about to die. You know, I just took a demon out of this brother and it went into the pigs, you know, uh, he's, he's, he's looking at the people and it's like, I don't understand it. It's just how we look at the brothers and sisters on clubhouse. Right. Because we can openly see their disbelief. But even within our congregations, as brothers and sisters, they also don't believe. Right. They don't believe. You got some brothers, they sit, they sit and they read and they study in every day. You got some sisters that's studying and reading every day. They sitting down with their kids going over the scriptures. You got the men sitting down with their sons. They trying to bring them up in the way of the Lord going through the scriptures. And you got some people that Hey, they turn the TV on. Um, I ain't gonna say what cartoon because somebody gonna think I'm talking about them. But they turn the TV on, uh, the iPad on, and they stick it in front of their kids. And hey, look, that's what that's what they get in there all day. And they the only time they hear the scriptures is on the Sabbath day. And then we wonder why kids rebel and things like that, right? And um, I mean, that's true. When I came into the truth, I was guilty of that. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time building up uh my son and things like that right so guess what guess if i didn't do it guess who was building them up the world you know the kids at his school and stuff like that so we gotta think what well, do we really believe are we doing the things pleasing to god are we preparing ourselves are we getting that spiritual growth right a lot of times no right so what are some of the things that our people have a hard time believing Right. I mean, it's written right there in the Bible. But guess what? It's like we don't believe it. We, we got issues with it. Right. Some of these prophecies. I'm going to go. Uh, let's go to the words of Christ. Matthew 24. And brothers and sisters, y'all should have this almost memorized by now. As much as we've been going over this. 
you know, Matthew 24, when we talk about the prophecies and things to come, it should be right there. Something that popped right into your head. So this Matthew chapter 24 and verse three, it said, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So, excuse me. So the disciples, they came to Christ. They wanted to know, you know, they wanted to know, hey, how I'm going to know this happening? How do we know? What's going to be the signs? Our people, like I said earlier, we always want signs. We want a sign. We want to look and something appear, you know, to everybody. Everybody want to wake up and then have something sitting in front of their bed saying, keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. It's like, and they and, and, and that's going to fix everything. Like, ah, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Right. But the scriptures in the Bible tell you what you're supposed to do. Right. You know, we we have the that word. Right. What the disciples had to go and get. We got it right here. It's written for us. But some of us still we don't believe we just, it, you know, we take it for granted. Right. It says, um, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right? I ain't never heard nobody come and say, I'm Yahweh Shah. <laughs> I'm your I'm Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. So when people come and you talk about that name stuff, I had a, a sister was like, a sister was like, oh, no, this is uh, the name, the name, the name. And some brother she want to prove that's not even in Israel United in Christ. He he don't want to deal with us because we don't say the name. It's like the scripture says many should come in my name. And I ain't heard nobody come in the name of Yahweh Shah yet. I'm just saying. You know, maybe we off. Maybe Israel United in Christ, we don't have it. You know, go somewhere else where they got it. <laughs> But uh, verse five, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. So guess what we're hearing about? We're hearing of these wars, rumors of wars, right? Wars, rumors of wars. That's what's going on right now. And we know now is a little different than when you heard about wars before, because what's happening right now? That great awakening is happening right now, right? When you think about the Israelites is happening right now. They can, you can see it. You can see your brothers and sisters waking up. You can see the understanding being given to the people and we starting to get it right. Israel is definitely not small anymore. It's not like some little, oh, them, don't worry about them in a month or two, they'll come back to, you know, playing the tambourine, right? I was just in, um, what was I at? At uh, Ace Hardware the other day, and I had a, a, a chain on, it was a menorah with a menorah on it, right? So I'm I'm walking through there, I'm, I'm you know I tried to find what I want, I didn't find it, you know, so I'm I'm walking pretty fast to leave, and next thing you know, you know Esau, he I don't even know how Esau the most nosiest people on the planet, I mean most nosiest people on the planet, Esau just was like, hey man, hey man, I, I like I like that chain right there. I said to myself, how did you even see this chain? Right. How did you see it? Right. Because they his spirit saw that chain. Right. He didn't see the chain. I was watching him the whole time playing with his messing with his wife, playing with his little kid. He didn't really see me. So I'm speed walking out the store. And guess what? He he turned around like, hey, man, I see the chain. man. I like that, man. Where you get it from? It's like somebody gave it to me and I just walked on out. But letting you know that everybody's starting to see us. Everybody's starting to see us and know us. They spirits waking up to who we are, you know? So, um, we know that right now we in that time, we in that time, right? It says, um, so you should hear wars and rumors of wars. So we hear about these wars. We hear about rumors of wars, right? What are you, what are we doing though? Some, some people, don't even look at the news. Don't watch the news. Don't watch any of these uh, YouTube uh, channels that go into um, the things that's happening and stuff like that. You really just wait for somebody to tell you what's going on. Right. That's not how we should be. You know, we should definitely be 
diligent. We definitely should be looking. We should be watching, right? We should be looking for these signs, right? We talk, everybody want a sign. It's right there, right? So it's like, what are we doing? Now, some people just, we just sleepwalking, right? It says, so you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. None of these shall fail. These prophecies not going to fail. All these things must come to pass, right? Verse seven, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, right? It says it's, it's just the beginning. Beginning of sorrows, right? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go. Let me real quick. I wanna, let me kind of segue off a little bit. It says these are just the beginning of sorrows. Let me show y'all how 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 crazy it's gonna it's gonna really get. Let me show y'all how crazy it's gonna get. This one our one of our prophets here, uh, Habakkuk. It's the book of Habakkuk, chapter three, and verse sixteen. Right. So he was able to he he was able to see. Uh, the end. He was able to see some of the pro stuff in the end that was going to happen. And he said, um, Habakkuk 3 and 16, he says, when I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones. Now you ever, you ever been in a situation that, hey, look, it's, you know, something bad happened. You're right. You see him, you know, something bad about to happen. Um, you know, uh, I know uh, a job that I used to work at. Um, um, they had this. They they had auditors and um, human resources people. And the thing was that if one of them came to your store and he had his um, he had his his briefcase, right? He had his whole briefcase or his whole backpack or that's y'all call it backpack. I call it a book sack. It is what it is. It's a book sack and a backpack. I don't know who lied to y'all, but. The thing was that if he had his briefcase or his book sack and he came into your store, somebody was getting fired. Somebody was having a bad day. That's what it was throughout the whole company, right? This wasn't like just some type of little thing that people made up. That's what it was, right? It was known. If, if an auditor or an HR person walked into your store with his backpack on, book sack, his briefcase, somebody was getting fired. It's like, but if he came in with just a little, uh, you know, a little notebook like thing in his hand, then everything all right. You know, you're good. You're probably just getting evaluated or something or you're just passing through. So I can remember one day yeah, I was uh, the manager of the store. I'm sitting at the front and, you know, they all they all drive the same kind of car. So you see him come in. He got a suit on. I said, and that's how I. So that's I that's, that's our HR guy. So he getting out the car. I was like, man, I know I'm not doing an audit. I was like, I wonder why he's here. And then I see him take that briefcase and put it around his head. And I was like, hey. <laughs> like the scripture says, it says, when I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones. I was like, my stomach just went into my ankle. I was like, oh, man, like somebody about to get fired. And he walked in the door and everybody just was staring at him. A guy seen it. And I was like, bro, he got his briefcase. We looking. He walked in, took three steps. He was like, oh, he's like, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I got to do some work. That's the only reason I got my briefcase on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And everybody could, everybody breathe. Everybody breathe, right? But we was messed up for a while. When, that, when we saw that happen, it was like, hey, somebody about to get fired. So think about what Habakkuk's seeing. He's seeing visions of what's happening in last days, right? Um, he says, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble when he cometh up unto the people, he will evade them with his truth. So he says, look, at the end of the day, Habakkuk said he wanted to be dead when all these prophecies come to pass. He's like, I don't even want to be alive. Right. I don't want to be alive. A lot of people think that at the end it's going to be, you know, it's just like just like the Christian church. They think that Christ coming back with hot air balloons and bubbles and teddy bears and things like that. That's not what he's coming back with. He's coming back with flames, 
a fire. That's what he coming back with. He coming back to render um, the rebuke of the Lord unto the people. But we don't think that, right? Go to, let me go to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5 and verse, I think, 17 or 18. Yeah, Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. So a lot of times people sit back and like, man, I can't wait until Christ return, man. I'm just waiting, can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, the scripture says, hey, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Why is he saying that? It says, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So he's letting you know that, hey, when, when that day comes, it's not going to be like a, we're going to walk out, we're going to hear like a, a loud trumpet and light going to appear and the angel's going to come down and be like, oh, come to me. No, nah, it ain't going to be like that. All right. That's 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 the, that's Christianity. Right. The Christian church told us it was going to be like that. The Christian church told us that these white people it was going to float from the sky and angels and and this, that, this, and that. That's what the Christian church told us, right? That's not what's in the Bible. It says, verse 19, it says, as if a man did flee from a lion. Think about think about seeing a lion. I know we see the videos when people be in these animal parks and you got the lions walking through next to the cars and stuff like that. Look, if you got outside of your car and one of them lions was ready to chase you, I'm sorry. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't, they ain't no cute animals at that point. They will eat you. It says, if one did flee from a lion and a bear met him. So think about you got away from the lion some kind of way. Ain't nobody fast enough to, to be the lion. But just say you did. You got away from that lion. Think about that. Like Habakkuk said, that rottenness in your uh, bones and, um, you know, trembling, right? You're scared. You done made it by. And then next thing you know. Hey, you walk into a room, there's a bear in there, right? Now, I don't watch videos on, um, I definitely don't watch videos on um, on YouTube about people coming to bears, they riding their bikes, they going through trails, and a bear start to chase them or follow them. It ain't even me in there, and I'm, I'm scared for them. I'm like, man, I watched a hunter was in a deer stand, a damn bear climbed the ladder, and he was up there with him and just stared at him for a while. I was like... And then he just, the bear got down, just kind of looked at him like, you know, I, you know, I kill you right now, right? That's what the day of the Lord is going to be like. It says, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. So think about it. You just ran from a lion. You saw a bear. You got away from a bear. Some kind of way you got inside the house. You're breathing. You can't breathe good. You're tired. So guess what? You put your, you lean over and lean your hand on the wall. You out of breath. It says, and a serpent bit him. A snake was hanging up on the top of the door and, and pop you real quick. I think if you watch class, we've seen that guy that was a charmer and he le reached down and the snake bit him on the face. Right. It says, um, verse 20, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. So we got to understand that when these days come to pass, that right now, look, it's, we, it's good right now. We got time to get ourselves right, to prepare. That's that grace that the Most High has extended to us uh, through his son. We got time to get right. But a lot of us just sitting back, just, you know, we just, we just floating along, floating along, right? We think, you know, everything's all good, right? And it ain't all good. It ain't all good. It's time to prepare. Let's see, where was I at? Uh, Matthew 24 and verse, um, I'm going to go back up to verse 7. Matthew 24 and verse 7. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. We, we, we're watching it on the news. We're hearing people talk about it. Right. Uh, uh, in Ukraine and uh, Russia and places like that, that's where all the um, what is that? The the grain, you know, they call it the, the bread capital of the world. That's where all the grain and stuff coming from. And then when you start researching it, you start looking into it. You realize that China, 
has been saving up grain. They've been gathering grain and stuff like that. They, they know something's about to happen, right? Because guess what? All the nations are confederate against what? This nation right here. They confederate against America. So they talking to each other like, look, look, we're going to start invading. We're going to push NATO. Um, we're going we're gonna to force some fingers right here. We're gonna, we, we know what they're going to do. They're going to sanction us. So guess what? Let's start preparing and getting ourselves together. So then, you know, out of nowhere, you know, China's holding on to a, a, one of the highest percentages of grain. Um, Russia, Ukraine, all these high percentages of grain and, 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 and things like that. Why are they doing that? Because they know, hey, it's about to get, it's about to get hot around here. So they're like, look, we're going to prepare. But the Bible has been telling us to prepare. The scriptures has been telling us, look, famine is going to come. Prepare, prepare, right? But are we doing that? Are we preparing? Like, if you can you walk into your um, storehouse and say, all right, I'm good for at least a month, two months, six months, a year. Can you say that? Right? Can you say you got anything? I know there's some people, there's somebody right now that for them to eat, they got to go to the store. They got to go to McDonald's. They got to go to Chick-fil-A. Right? They open that refrigerator and you got some old milk in there, um, a beer. You know, we see, we see this on um, on movies and stuff like that. Somebody will open a refrigerator and you got an old beer. You got this, that, this, and that. Right? And if it go down, what are you going to do? Are you preparing for the famine, right? Are you preparing? Uh, in most of our, in all of our schools, we have pantries set up. And one thing I hear from all the leaders, from all the leaders in these schools is that they try and give the food away and people be like, nah, I'm good. Nobody taking, nobody's calling, nobody's like, you know, hey, let me, you know, I need some help. Uh, you know, I, I can't, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. You know, let me help. Let me, let me, let, let, let me get some of this. Nah, guess what? <clears throat> our people don't do that. You know why? Because we prideful. We don't want nobody to know our business. I don't understand our people. You know, I, I grew up like that. My mother used to be, don't tell nobody our business. <laughs> it's like, but what if they can help? What if somebody can help? Nah, we don't tell nobody our business. I don't want nobody to know that we don't have no food in the house. I don't want nobody to know this. I don't want nobody to know that. You know, we want to keep everything on the low. Everything on the low. Nobody want nobody to know that we have any problems or anything. While on the other side, you got the other nations, you know, they got, they got, um, you know, they got food buried under the ground. They got they got stuff buried in different places. They got maps in their houses to be like, hey, look, if something happened here, if we go to this spot right here, I got stuff buried under here so we can make it. If we got to leave the house, we got places to go. The other nations got all this stuff set up. But we have the Bible that's telling us to prepare. This is going to happen and a lot of our people, they don't prepare. It's like, because uh, they don't believe, right? So it says there should be famines, right? So are you prepared for the famine? If you're not prepared for the famine, you don't believe. It is what it is. If you're not preparing, because what does it really mean to be fully prepared? We don't know. I don't know what it means to be fully prepared. You know, I look at the stuff that I have and I'm like, uh, you know, Am I fully prepared? I don't know, right? Because I'm going to prepare for myself. I got brothers and sisters that's around me. Guess what? I want to make sure I'm prepared for them. So what does it mean to be fully prepared? Who knows? So guess what? You should be constantly preparing, right? For the famine. It says, and pestilences, right? So we know that it's going to be sicknesses and stuff like that. How, who taking their vitamins every day, right? We was told to take the vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, Different things like that. You know, who take who waking up in the morning and taking a vitamin, taking their vitamins every morning, right? Not that many people, right? Guess what? We've been told to burn the fat. Hey, look, I've been told to burn the fat. My ass still fat, right? 
I got to burn the fat, y'all. I got to burn the fat, right? But we got to make sure we all doing that together, right? And we see our brothers and sisters that need to do it. We got to make sure we getting on them, right? We got to make sure that's happening. We preparing for the pestilences. We doing stuff, right? You go to your doctor. Everybody need to go to their doctor and get a physical. Everybody need to get a physical. Everybody. Man, women, child, we got to make sure our health is good. Got to make sure we right. Make sure we ain't got no hidden, you know, illnesses inside that we got to make sure we get fixed. Because guess what? In that day, you ain't going to be able to go to the um, to the to the clinic on the corner. Right. You ain't going to be able to do that. You definitely will not be able to do that. It's not going to be ready for you. Right. Like if you anybody ever seen that movie uh, with Tom Hanks, Castaway. Right. Castaway. He was cast away some uh, on a plane crash and. He had a, a, a abscess, right? He had to get that. He had to get that tooth out of his mouth. You know, he ended up having to get a a, a skate um, blade with a rock and pow to pop it out of his mouth. I'm sure that hurt. But if any of y'all ever had a, a toothache before or an abscess or something like that, and you weren't able to get to the doctor, you had to wait till the next day, and you going through that pain, <clears throat> I'm gonna let you know, it ain't fun. It's an unbearable pain. So look, make sure you prepare yourself, right? Make sure you prepare yourself for what's coming, right? It says in earthquakes and diverse places. It said all these are the beginning of sorrow. So it's just the beginning, right? It's the beginning. It's just the beginning of sorrows, right? So it's going to be more and more and more to come, all right? So um, we get another scripture, 2 Edges chapter 16. 2 Edges 16 and verse 70. What of our what are our people are not preparing themselves for? Right? What do they not believe? These prophecies saying these things are gonna come. Why are our people not understanding that it's gonna come? Right? Why are we sitting back and thinking somebody else is gonna save us? Right. These things are going to happen. Right. But guess what? Our people, we don't believe. Right. We don't believe we have issues believing. So uh, Second Edris chapter 16. Yeah, Second Edris chapter 16 and verse where well, I want to start at verse 70, <clears throat> 16 and verse 70. It says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So guess what? It's going to be problems for them that fear the Lord. It's going to be, and it's like I said, it's every city. Nobody going to be able to run away from this thing, right? It's going to be insurrections, right? Insurrections to them that fear the Lord. The scriptures talk about that. For us that fear the Lord, right? Um, um, what's that? What's that scripture in Revelation? Hold on, let me find it real quick. Where I'm at. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse <clears throat> 17. It says, And a dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So look, we know that them that's keeping the commandments it's going to be insurrection. Like the scripture said, it's going to be a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So we know these things are going to happen. We look look at the prophecy. This is going to happen, right? We're going to be spoiled, meaning the things that some of us have is going to be taken away from us, right? So we got to make sure what we're preparing here, but then we're thinking about if something happens here, where do I go from there, right? These things should be on the mind of you brothers and sisters. We should be talking about it. We should be preparing for these things, right? Leadership, we can look. Leadership, we're trying to do the best we can, but to prepare, first of all, we got to prepare for our families. And then we're trying to prepare for the whole nation. That's why we got stuff set up. You know, I'm sure y'all have been seeing um, some of these videos coming um, from the, the prepping team. Um, you know, a group of a group of brothers that are um, putting together videos 
that, you know, hey, we should watch these videos. We got some real good tips in there about how we should be preparing, things that we should be doing to get ourselves together. And, and not only that, but the classes that's coming out, right? So you got the Bible coming out. You got other brothers and sisters that's trying to uh, prepare the people. We got to make sure we're paying attention and taking heed to these things because all of these things are going to happen, right? Uh, let me read that again. Verse Verse 71, it says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. That's why Habakkuk said, now nah, I'm, I'm straight. <laughs> He's like, look, just take me, take me to the king now. Take me to the king now. Habakkuk didn't want to be here. He saw this. He saw this insurrection. He saw these things happening. He was like, uh, no, nah, I'm good. Just take me now. You know, let me let me go now. Um, and, you know, what I'm saying we'll figure something out. You know, we'll, I already know what, what the end is. We got we know that at the end, you know, Israel going to win. You know, it is what it is. It's like watching. um Watching Cinderella. We know at the end that, guess what? <laughs> Cinderella going to be good. You know, we're watching a movie. It's already written. We know what's going to happen at the end. But guess what? Somebody got to go through the bad parts of this movie, right? Somebody's going to have to go through the, the bad parts of this movie. And guess what? It it may be us, right? It may be us, you know, lo, you know, a Lord willing, Lord willing that, that you know, the scripture says we'd be able to, uh, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Let me see. Hold on real fast. Let me make sure I got the scripture. Mm. Uh, hold on one second. If I can find the scripture real quick. That's the only downfall uh doing a class by yourself. You can't tell somebody to, to just talk. You trying to find something. All right, I'm gonna leave. Uh, I don't want to leave it alone. See if I can find it real fast. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna leave it alone because I don't want to waste too much time. But um Basically saying us, some people are going to be able to see um, Christ's return. We're going to see him return, right? We're going to see that that day happen. Somebody's going to see it, you know. Uh, would I rather not be there? Hey, you know, I'm sure Habakkuk was a wise man. He didn't want to be there. But at the end of the day, you know, um, hey, let's get it, you know. At the end of the day, let's get it. You know, we watch, we're watching all these uh Movies, Mad Max and the Thunderdome and stuff like that. Hey, we we didn't grow up in that generation watching that for no reason. We didn't grow up watching the Book of Eli, uh, watching all these movies on the last days and stuff like that. You think they was watching that in the days of Moses? They was watching movies about what was going to happen at the end? Nah, they didn't watch none of that. It's a reason why we grew up and we had movies and we seen things and stuff like that. It's a reason why we seen them. That's what I think, you know. Don't nobody quote me on this and say um, Israel United in Christ believe this and believe that. That's what I personally think. I I think that um, you know, we saw certain things. We grew up seeing certain things for a reason, right? I think I personally think that. I think that you know, this generation is it's going down. It's going down. But that's what I personally think. All right, so um. So we see all these things. Second Ezra 6 and 26. Maybe that's our praise assist. Let me see that. Let me see that. Mm. That's not what I want. It's not the one I want, though. All right. So all praises. So guess what? We know all this stuff going to happen. We know it's going to come to pass. We see all the the things that's going to happen. So guess what? We got to make sure we got to grow up. You know, we can't sit back and just think um, 
somebody else is going to take care of this thing for us. And that's what I feel that a lot of people think. They think that, you know, the super Israelites are going to come and they're going to throw a, a cape around them and they're going to be OK. Nah, we all going to go through this affliction. We're going to go through this trial. We're going to go through this insurrection. We're going to go through this famine. We're going to go through all these things together. Right. So it's everybody should should change. Everybody should believe this thing, right? Everybody should change their mindset, right? Let's go to Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Everybody needs to change their mindset when it comes to these scriptures, these prophecies, and the things to come. It says, for as he think of in his heart, so is he, right? That's one of them, um, what they call that, the, um, the Mandela effect. Right. I always think that scripture say, you know, as a man think of. Right. I always think that's what it say, but it don't say that. It says for as he thinketh in his heart, maybe in another version it say that. I don't know. But it says for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So guess what? The brothers and sisters that have that mindset that this is going to happen. Right. Guess what you're going to start to do? You're going to start to have action. You're going to start a plan. You're going to start to move that way, right? If certain brothers that you come around and you talk to them about certain stuff, guess what? <clears throat> they know they're going to start saying, hey, hey, look, yeah, because of this, that, you know, you need to get this. You need to go grab that, this, that, this and that, right? You're going to, you're going to start thinking about it. they. They think this way. Right. That's what's in them. You know, you got certain brothers, you go around them, you know, they talking about, um, they talking about the next this or the next that, you know, uh, they talking about anime. They talking about, um, you know, ain't nothing wrong with none of that stuff. Right. But just, you know, just in, in moderation. Right. But you but, you know, as certain brothers and sisters, they main mindset is preparing themselves. Their main mindset is studying, you know, uh, study, uh, pray and apply. That's their mindset. That's the mindset that they have. Right. So guess what? You got to make sure you got that mindset. You got to make sure you think that this is going to happen. I know um, that there was a Titus 2 not too long ago with uh, uh, Deacon Deacon Abiel's real bid. And man, hey, next thing you know, I'm, you know, I'm looking at at um, looking at my Amazon, um, <laughs> what they call it, Amazon um, cart. It got all kinds of stuff in it. I'm like, what? What is this? What is this? What is this powdered honey? What what the hell, what's going on? You know, my, my my ribs, this and that. I had another brother. He said he, he looked at his cart. His wife had six hundred dollar water gathering apparatuses and stuff in there. He's like, hey, 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 calm down, calm down. Right? But our people start, some people are starting to get it and understand that, wait a minute, this ain't a game. Like you, we really got to prepare for what's coming on. We really may need to start stocking up. Like it sounds good when you hear it, but you actually come to somebody's house that's really prepared and you walk in one of them rooms and you be like, water, 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 rice, beans, canned goods, you know, uh, they got canned vegetables and can this and that and oh man they got bags and medical supplies and and all this different stuff like wow and you then you start thinking about you start thinking about wait a minute well, what do i have and then you think about your house and you go wait a minute i got i got some canned goods so like i ain't got no water uh, listen to you everybody y'all gathering rice and beans you need water to cook all of this stuff, right? <laughs> you got you can you need water for this. Y'all got to think about that. You can have all the beans in the world. You ain't got no water. And what you gonna do? You gonna just eat the hard bean? I mean, I guess you could eat a hard bean. I don't know. I guess if you're hungry enough, you can eat a hard bean. If you got no water, how you gonna cook the rice? You gonna eat the you gonna, <laughs> gonna eat the hard rice? Ah, you know, at the end of the day, you really need water to survive more than, you know, the food. But I ain't gonna go too far into that, you know, but they got this this site, this um this YouTube channel called The Prepping Team. You know, y'all check them out. You know, I don't, I don't know these guys, but y'all check them out or whatnot. 
you know, you see, right? Uh, somebody just asked, will it, you know, will it rain? I don't know, will it rain in that day? You know, uh, who knows? Who knows whether it will it rain or not? You know, the most high, if he's going to put us through it, he's putting us through it. You know, he putting us through, he's going to put us through it. You know, that's what that pestilence and famines and stuff like that. You know, that go into that having droughts and stuff like that. That's what they go into. You know, who knows? But guess what? I don't want to be caught without. I don't want to be caught wondering if maybe I want to be prepared, you know, like. You know, hey, look, I, I used to listen to E-40 back in the day. He said, I'd rather be caught with than without. So, hey, be caught with than without. You know, we say we say rain, but we know that throughout the scriptures, one thing we do, we go into reading this Bible. We know that the Lord stopped the rain. You know, he had had different droughts and stuff like that that happened on the earth. So that goes into all that famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. So we're going to that's going to happen. All right. So. It is what it is. We can't just think something's going to happen. I could think that, hey, look, the grocery store is going to still be open. right? I could think the farmer's market is going to still be there. But guess what? Hey, I'd rather be prepared. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just in Proverbs 23, verse seven, for as he think of in his heart. So if he eat and drink, say if he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So guess what? You got to change your mindset to be thinking this way. And then when you change your mindset, guess what? action action right so let me see um first samuel chapter two and verse three the most high was always telling us to be about action be about that action right that's what that's what the kids say i don't say that but the kids say that uh first samuel chapter two and verse three talk no more so exceedingly proudly let some people uh, talk about these things right they'll talk about being prepared and yeah, this is gonna happen. Y'all are watching little YouTube videos and be an expert in everything. I, I ain't gonna lie, I can't I can't stand that. I can't stand that. Brothers, you know, they got a little a group where we talk about preparing and you see people posting stuff and I'll be like, you don't you don't even have that. Like you posting about something, you just watch the video. You don't even know if it worked. <laughs> Stop posting that stuff. People be talking about something. Yeah, you know, we gotta we got to um, we got to store gas. Like, yeah, store gas because it doesn't go bad. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever. But um, first, uh, first Samuel chapter two and verse three, it says, talk no more. So exceeding proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are Wait, look, the most high, guess what? He going to, he weigh the actions. He going to weigh your actions, right? He want to see you do these things. He want to see you move. It's like, okay, I'm giving you the warning. What you going to do? You going to sit back and wait for somebody else to save you? Like Lamentation 4 and 17, like a lot of our people, they think, they think Esau going to have a plan for him. It's like, oh yeah, the government got stuff set up, you know, uh, FEMA, you know, that they're gonna help us in that day. Nah, nah. You know, like the scriptures say, everybody gonna 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 be amongst their own people, right? It's a um, it's a it's a it's a. I remember if you ever, I don't know how old y'all is. I'm not old. I'm young, but I uh, know. But uh, the Twilight Zone. It's it was it's a show in the Twilight Zone called um, man, what is it called? It's called the um. I know it's not. I think it's called the shelter. It was the shelter. I think it's the shelter. It's the Twilight Zone is called the shelter, and um, it's an episode where you know they had like a um, this guy had like a, a bomb shelter or whatnot, a fallout shelter, and you know he had that mindset. He had the mindset to prepare. His mindset was prepare. He got the little fallout shelter put together and everything. And people thought he was crazy. Like people in the neighborhood, it was like, this dude nuts. He got a fallout shelter for what? No big deal. Next thing you know, they sitting down, they sitting around and then on the radio, it come, you know, you hear the, 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 the sirens and going and they like, everybody looking what's going on. He's like, it's like, go and in, go into your fallout shelters and, and prepare for this, this and that. So all his friends was over at his house. So it's like, so people, everybody running, you know, to um, everybody running to their house and stuff. 
while him and his family, you know, he grabbing some of the stuff and they, hey, hey, Billy, you know, take this, put this here. They putting, they ready. They like put the, you know, put the little extra stuff in the shelter and stuff like that. Next thing you know, you know, one by one, the neighbors start popping up at the house and was like, hey, um, you know, what should we do? He's like, go, go to your shelter. That's what you need to do. Go to your house and prepare your family with the fallout shelter that, you know, was presented to us. That we need to have to uh, be prepared in that day. But guess what? None of them did. They was like, you know, it got room. He's like, no, I don't have room for you. This thing, I just got enough food, water, uh, air, you know, for my family. I don't have enough for you. So, you know, at the end of the, at the, end of the movie, this, uh, what's that? Uh, what they call that? Uh, spoiler alert, you know. Basically, I'm not going to spoil it all the way. But basically, everybody didn't prepare and they were dependent on that one person that did. So go watch it. You know, you can watch it on YouTube, I think. I think it's called The Shelter. Um, you know, um, yeah, it's called The Shelter, right? Um, I'll, I'll say this. In, in some circles, they make Esau watch this to let them get an understanding of what's going to happen in that day, right? So... You know, you you look you look at next door and you see your Edomite neighbor and they like, hi, you know, they get a little, you know, but guess what? They prepared over there. They like, yeah, I wish somebody would come to my house in that day. Right. So. um, All right. Just um, so it's got to be actions. You got to have actions. You got to act. You can't just sit back and wait. Right. So this is um the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse three, Proverbs 22 and verse three. It reads, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide of himself, but the simple pass on and are punished, right? Excuse me. So prudent, right? The prudent man, right? Meaning he, a man of understanding, a man that's, 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 that's like, like the scripture says, he foreseeth the evil, right? He reading his four chapters a day. He's watching the classes. He's listening. He's understanding. He believes this thing. He's prudent. He cares about his household. He cares about his family, himself, and he cares about his nation. A prudent man, right? He foresee the evil. The prophecies have been taught from old time, right? Been taught from old time. We see these things. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. The class is coming out. Prepare, 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 right? Get your pantries together, right? Uh, stock up. The famine's coming. Every in every school in Israel United in Christ, I'm sure on your announcements, is something about famine or go shop. Bishop Nathaniel always says, "Don't pigeon shop," meaning don't um go and buy two or three things, right? Um, we, we talked about it before. Um, you know, dealing with couponing, right? Uh, the sisters couponing, right? Um. It's a, it's a, from what I understand, well, I know it's a couponing group, right? And, and, and the complaint from some of the sisters that, that's, that kind of run it or they kind of try to teach the sisters how to coupon is that it's a lot of people on that group, but everybody ain't doing it. You know, everybody ain't doing it. And hey, look, it's a, it's a joy for, for me to, uh, you know, sometimes my rib, she'll wake up early in the morning before she go to work. She'll go to the store, get a coupon in. She come back. You know, she got bags and bags of stuff, right? She can pay $4, you know, <laughs> not only it paid $4, but then she get all these rebates and she got, to, you know, she get these $10 gift certificates and, and checks and stuff like that from these places. They are giving food away. They are giving supplies away. It's, they're giving it away, right? But guess what? Some of our people do. They for some of our people foresee the evil and we just sit back and go, eh, it is what it is. I got time. You know, Christ ain't coming back when I'm alive. It's going to be later. Okay. Keep thinking that. It's because you're not prudent. You don't care about yourself and you don't care about your nation. You don't care about your nation. You don't care. You, you don't care at all. Right. Because I know for a fact, you know, and I, I heard, um, I say I, I'd have heard somebody in leadership say this. They said that, hey, look, some of y'all that don't want to prepare for yourselves, 
you know, guess what? And I know you got you got kids. I ain't gonna let your kid go hungry, but you you gonna be hungry, all right? Because you you are the you are you're an adult, right? You know these things. Guess what? Prepare, do something. Have at least have something, right? Some of y'all get uh, some of y'all get food stamps, right? You know, guess what? You get food. You get food for free. But guess what y'all do with the money? Y'all do with the food stamps. Y'all sell the food stamps to get money to pay for other stuff. It's like, man, you you able to really stack up on things, right? But you don't because you don't think the end coming, right? You don't think the end coming. But it is what it is. Um, but somebody wrote, rumor said he came at, uh, uh, he coming at midnight. He came at 11.59, man, nobody prepared. <laughs> it is what it is. That's what's going on with our people, right? They don't. But let me read the scripture one more time. Proverbs 22 and verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. I know I've seen a sister said she needed to be added to that group. Look, you can go to YouTube and you can type in couponing. There are thousands of videos with people that will walk you through how to coupon. They will go in the store. They will tell you what coupons to clip. They will go in the store and they will say, they will show you the items to buy and how to buy it, how many to buy it. They will show you step by step how to do it. But what do our people do? They don't do it. They just say, oh, this hard. You know, and they just leave it alone. You know, my rib was like that when she first started it. She couldn't, she just couldn't get it. Now she a couponing maniac. I'd be like, calm down, you know, slow down. We don't need no more toothpaste. I got a, I got a bucket. I got a, I got a, I got a big, uh, what they call them things? A big old, um, tote. I got a tote. Really. I'm looking at it right now. It's full to the top of toothpaste and toothbrushes. I, Cause it's free. They give it. It's free. They be like, here, it's free. Whatever. You know, without some of these deals, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this toothbrush. I'll be trying to give it away. Y'all need some toothbrushes and toothpaste? Hey, come to Birmingham. I got you. <laughs> but um, they got that right. Um, yeah, just like what uh, Officer Daniel just said. He said he, we have people that won't even come and get the free food from the food bank that they give out. And um, in Memphis, right? In Memphis. They uh in, in a lot of different schools, you know, they, they get food from the food bank, right? We, you know, a lot of people talk about being a 501c3. They'd be like, ah, y'all 501c3. But guess what? You get certain things for being that, right? You able to have uh food banks where they drop off uh truckloads of food, right? Pallets and pallets of food, right, to you for free. Right. And then we distribute the food to the needy. But guess what? A lot of the needy, a lot of brothers and sisters don't even come and get the food. Just like what the officer just said. They don't come and get the food. They Everybody too good for that or whatever. I don't I don't know. Or they or they think that. Everything's going to be good in that day. Right. They don't believe in that day, but you better believe it. The scriptures many times in the scriptures we read. And in that day. All right. It's going to be there. Right. So it says a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide of himself. How he hide himself, meaning the evil coming. He's trying to get away from the evil. So guess what? He's preparing. He's putting forth action to hide himself for that evil to come. Hide himself from that evil to come. He said, I'm coming all the way from Trinidad. I need a new toothbrush. Hey, look, I'm a. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we got different things where we send stuff out to the schools and um, the islands and stuff like that. You know, so. I think some of my toothbrushes and stuff was on that <laughs> was on one of the last um, shipments or whatnot. But um, you're going to hide yourself. If you prove it, you're going to hide yourself. You see the evil coming. You're going to prepare. You're like, OK, it's going to be a famine. Right. So what I'm going to do to hide myself from the famine. Guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to stock up on food. If it's going to be a drought to hide myself from the drought, I'm going to figure out a way to store <clears throat> to store water. Right. So we see that it's going to happen, right? Guess what? Guess what? If you're prudent, guess what you're going to do? You're going to hide yourself from it. It says, but the simple pass on and, and are punished. 
So guess what? If you simple, if you simple, guess what? You see that all these things are going to happen and you just sit back and go, hey, it is what it is. Right. It is what it is. And the scriptures say you're going to be punished. You're going to be punished for your simplicity. Right. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. First Thessalonians chapter five. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter five and verse one. Start at verse one. First Thessalonians chapter five, and verse one. But of the times and seasons, brother, you have no need that I write unto you. It's like, look, it ain't no, I don't have, I shouldn't have to do this class because you've been, it's in the Bible. It's the prophecies in the Bible already was told what was going to happen. It says for, <clears throat> for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. We've been hearing that since we've been in the Christian church. We've been hearing it since the Christian church. The day of the Lord going to come as a thief in the night, thief in the night, thief in the night. Meaning you ain't going to know it. It's just going to happen right there, right? So we do understand that. But at the same time, we understand that before we get to that day, like the scripture said in Matthew 24, guess what it's going to be? It's going to be pestilences. It's going to be uh, droughts. It's going to be famines. It's going to be nation against nation. It's going to be wars. We already know that this is going to happen, right? And that's going to happen before we get to the end. We got to... We gotta, um, we got to make sure that we take it when we ready for what's going to happen before the end. Right. A lot of us is like, oh, I got to make sure I get myself right with the Lord. Yeah. Keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Right. But don't just sit back and just think, OK, I got to make sure I got my fringe zone, beard, uh, the sisters. I got a dress that's modest, border of blue. All right. Yeah. I'm keeping the feast. Day. That's good. Guess what? That ain't all it. You have to prepare, 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 right? The whole Bible, not just certain parts. You got to deal with the whole Bible, all the scriptures in the Bible, right? So 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1, it said, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, that's what some of our people saying. That's what the world's trying to say. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Peace and safety. Then, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So the scripture is saying, look, y'all should have the understanding right now that you know that the day of the Lord is coming, that you know we're going to go through insurrections in every city, that we're going to be spoiled, our goods going to be robbed, we're going to be taken from houses, right? We know this thing. The scripture says, are not in the darkness. Us brothers and sisters, we not in the darkness. And that day shall overtake you as a thief, right? Meaning if you know you live in a bad neighborhood where people's houses and stuff get broken into, guess what you know? You know that, hey, let me not leave my purse in my car. Let me not um, un keep my doors unlocked. Let me not keep my expensive things in my car. Let me bring it inside. Let me get an alarm system. Let me get a, a camera system, right? Let me get better locks for my doors. Let me get, uh, you know, is uh, how many of y'all done watched the video on how to prepare yourself, prepare your homes for getting broken into and things like that? Do y'all know that on your door, on the lock on your door, they, you have these, they have the screws. That by taking those screws out and replacing them with four-inch screws, that <clears throat> somebody just trying to kick your door in, they gonna have to kick for a while. They ain't just gonna be like they just bump into it and the door open. Just that little small fix is something that can prepare your house in that day for somebody trying to break in. They can't just kick the door in once. If you land in a bed sleeping, you hear it, boom, boom. Boom, boom. By that time, you got time to wake up and stuff like that, right? You know, it ain't about a better lock, but sometimes you get better screws, right? That's why you single sisters need to get married. <laughs> you single sisters need to stop worrying about, ah, well, you know, he a little too short. Uh, he got a bald spot or whatnot. Look, my hair, look at that. My stuff's going back. Soon as it's going to be back here. Man, 
I don't want that day to come, but it's going to happen. Some of y'all sisters picky, you know. Oh, man, I don't want him, you know, this and that. But that brother could be ready. He could be prepared. He could have a, a house full of stuff set up. He can have places everywhere, right? But some of you sisters, y'all just sitting back and thinking, now I could do this by myself. Okay, all right, all right, do it by yourself. If we're going to... We shall find out. We shall definitely find out. Can you do it by yourself? We're going to see. Because you can't. You can't do it by yourself. You need a man. You know, you need a man. Some of y'all sisters, some of y'all sisters strong. And some of y'all maybe stronger than me. They can, they can bench more than I can bench or whatever. But guess what? You ain't mentally stronger than a man. It is what it is. When they go down, you're going to break. You're going to be sitting in a corner crying somewhere, thinking about, um, Watching the, the the Food Network or something like that. Whatever them shows women be watching. Lifetime. Y'all going to be thinking about Lifetime. While the little short brother, the little short, uh, dark-skinned, uh, charcoal black brother, guess what? Guess what he doing? He done hopped in his Jeep and he went to his bug out spot. Right. He done try. He done. He done. Um, he done try to, to get with this sister. I don't know. He's short. Try to get with this sister. I don't know. He look too dark skinned. Try to get with this sister. Like he got a receding hairline. I don't know. You know, this, that, this, and that. Like, okay. Okay. All right. You will see. <laughs> Y'all sister's picky as hell. All right. We'll see. I'm gonna be sitting. That's hey, that's why in uh Isaiah 4 it says, and that day these women gonna be out. Right, let me um look, look, I eat my own bread. Just let me be called by your name. Right, don't don't wait for that day. Go find you, get you a Lord, a brother, a brother that the leadership think is a good brother, right? They say it's all right. Like get a brother a chance, you know what I'm saying? Because look, all y'all, all y'all ugly at um five o'clock in the morning, wake up crusting your eye, breath stinking. It is what it is. Everybody ugly. Some point, <laughs> at some point, everybody ugly. It is what it is. Y'all ain't nobody. Everybody ain't waking up looking beautiful. It is what it is. You know, y'all know been married. Y'all sisters that may be super, super tight, super right. Y'all had that baby. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got spots y'all covering up. It is what it is. I'm just saying. Y'all better, y'all better, um, these short, hey, these short brothers, they can, they can, they, they, they got a good, um, <laughs> they got uh, a good center of gravity. You know what I'm saying? They pick, pick you up and bring you through the tre threshold. So just saying, some of y'all sisters sitting back and, Thinking everything gonna be all right. And y'all got y'all got brothers that's single brothers that's about this truth, that's about the mission, and they looking for they looking for a wife. And y'all sitting back going, uh, ah, well, I don't know about him. Like, okay, all right, whatever. It is what it is. All right, so um go back to the uh, scriptures. Uh first Thessalonians five. Let me read it. Let me see where I wanted to go. Um, verse three. Uh, verse three, it says, uh, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not in the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us not sleep. Let's not sleep. Let's not sit back and let life just pass us on by. These scriptures pass us by. The understanding what we need to do, let us pass us by. And think somebody else going to help us out. Somebody else going to wait. You know what I'm saying? Don't let's not think that. I'm telling you, some of y'all sisters done had multiple brothers uh, approach you or approach your leadership to try and um, that they want to, they interested in you and y'all done, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, I don't know. I don't want him. I don't want that. No, I want a brother that's this. I want a brother that's that. Whatever. We'll we'll find out what you're going to want. And that day when y'all, when y'all seeing, um, when y'all be at Tabernacles, and y'all see a brother and his wife pull up and the brother hop out the truck and he set up the tent. He putting everything together. He's sitting stuff down while you waiting for the men on the tent team to come and set your tent up. That that should that that there should let you know that like, on that day, you got good brothers. That's like, OK, let me help these sisters out. 
some of these brothers be single and then you still wouldn't get on the time of day. But in that day, just understand that a lot of this charity, everybody ain't going to be that charitable in that day. And I'm not I'm not saying that that's a good thing. I'm not saying that that's the way it's supposed to be. But that's what's going to happen. People are going to be worried about themselves. People are going to be worried about their own households. All praises for the righteous uh, brothers and sisters that's going to be looking to other people. But it ain't going to be like it is at Tabernacles when you got 20 brothers on the tent team that's just waiting in the middle of the night to set your tent up at four in the morning in the rain. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Right. Don't get it twisted. Verse six again. Therefore, let us not sleep. Don't sleep. Don't get it twisted. Don't sleep as do others. Right. It's a lot of people that's, you know, just sitting around like it is what it is. Right. I got a brother. I got a brother. He, in, you know, he in the world and, you know, real good job. He, um, he's a, um, dang, what's the name of his title? Uh, he a scientist. I can't remember the name. What he what the, what the hell he do? He work on stuff with the immune system. He's a, a immunologist, right? So we talk about the vaccines and stuff like that. He one of the people that make that stuff and create that stuff and test and stuff like that. I don't know. He think I'm crazy. I think he crazy. It is what it is. But uh, you know, hey, <laughs> make a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money. But he, you know, he don't. When I talk to him about being prepared and stuff like that, he like. You know, um, you know what you're talking about. You crazy, right? I'm like, well, look, just throw some of that money my way. Like, I'll prepare for you. You know, throw some of that stuff my way. You know, you don't need it. It is what it is. But um, you know, a lot of people sit around and just like, ah, uh, you know, we don't need to do that. It's gonna be okay. Nothing's gonna happen. The scripture says, let us let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Pay attention to what's going on. Read the scriptures, study the scriptures, watch the classes, understand what's being told to us through these classes, through our leadership, right? And be sober, right? Have your mind right. Like the scripture said before, as a as, as a man think, if it don't say that, it says, uh, as uh, for as he think of in his heart, right? Same thing, but not the same thing, right? As a man think of, as you think in your heart, that's what you're going to do, right? Be that way. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. A lot of y'all in Israel, y'all sleep. And we trying to hammer these classes into your head over and over and over again. But guess what? We still going to have issues in that day, right? It's Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, but without faith, it, says, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder, rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. They ain't never even seen rain at that day, right? They ain't even seen rain that day. They don't know what rain was. They're like, going to flood the earth. What are you talking about? Flood the earth how? Where the water coming from? They didn't even see it, right? Noah didn't see it, right? It says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, he moved with fear. We got to move with fear, right? When you're scared of, of something going to happen, guess what? You're moving fast. You're moving quick, right? You're trying to, um, you're making haste. You're not just like, ah, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like, look, you see a 150-pound Rottweiler running down the street at you. You're not going to be like, oh, look at this dog with... Let me let me go inside and you walk slow. It's like, nah, you hauling. You know, if you got stuff in your hand, you got a bag or groceries or whatnot, that stuff hitting the floor and you're trying to get inside to safety, right? If y'all seen that movie Cujo, I don't know if you've seen Cujo. Cujo, one of the movies that uh, destroyed my childhood. <laughs> Guess what? Hey, they, they wasn't sitting back going slow when that dang on um Big St. Bernard was was chasing after them, right? Let me read it one more time. Uh, verse seven, it says, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as of yet. And just like us, we warned, we being told this is going to happen. 
these things are going to happen to you, right? It says, um, um, it says, um, I'm sorry, being warned of God of the things not seen as yet, move with fear. He made haste. He moved with fear. He was afraid. So he moved fast, right? He prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He prepared that ark to save his house. What are you doing to save your house? What are you doing? Right? Are you preparing? Are you setting up? Are you getting ready? Or are you just sitting back and just, it is what it is. He said he prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Right? So like I said, we always had a problem with belief, right? The other people, the other, they knew. He was talking about it. They thought he was crazy. You know, some of them, some people think I'm crazy. All praises think I'm crazy. I'll be crazy and ready. I'll have stuff and not ever have to need it. And like, okay, good. Well, all praises, I didn't have to need this stuff. Some people think that the stuff that we saying about the uh, end that's coming, we crazy, right? Okay. I'll be that. We'll be that. Some of y'all think it's not going to be like that. You know, they it's not really going to be like that. That's, you know, it's not going to be as bad as they're trying to say it's going to be. We don't, I don't even know how bad it's going to be. I have no idea. I was talking to um, a captain yesterday. He was talking about stuff. We we think of, we're trying to find ways to prepare for the nation, for the body. And we was talking about stuff. And I started thinking, I was like, dang, is it really going to be that bad? I was like, dang, it, it is. It's going to be that bad. Like, I hope y'all preparing. I hope y'all taking heed. I hope y'all doing what the Bible says to do, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, <clears throat> I put away childish things. We got to put away childish things, Israel. Got to put away childish things, right? And what what's, how does a child think? You know what a child think? A child thinks that somebody else is going to provide for them. You know, the child, baby, when a baby hungry, baby just start crying. And then ploop, you know, the pop in, baby get the, hey, it is what it is. Baby get the, um, get the food, right? It is what it is, you know. Um, I'll praise to the most high. Um, so a child thinks that someone else will provide for them. Right. I'm looking at the comments. Um, I seen somebody said that they, um, you know, preparing with a deep freezer. Hey, all praise for the deep freezers. Like go online and look up, you know, these they got different alarms for these deep freezers that you can hook up to your phone. And so if the deep freezer go out, it'll send you an alert that, hey, look, the temperature rising in this thing, something ain't right. You can get back to your house, get it fixed. Get it, get your food, move somewhere else, do something, get some ice and stuff set up so you don't lose all your food. So just something to think about. And you're going to, and guess what? You're going to see about some of these things on the prepping, the prepping team YouTube channel. So make sure y'all subscribe to that thing. I mean, some of y'all been seeing it. Um, the prepping team. And look at this officer asked me, what is it called? You got my phone number I'm talking about. Um, this, I'll, I'll, I'll post it on, on the YouTube channel or whatnot. But guess what? Um, so um, that's what kids think. <clears throat> kids waiting for somebody else to, to, you know, to fix for them, right? You got to think about it. You got your one-year-old, he hungry. He just sitting back. And when he get hungry, he, somebody else need to bring him food. That's how some of you are in this truth, right? You waiting for somebody else to help you, to save you, to pro pro provide for you. You can't be that way. I'm going to read this. Matthew 6, 25, right? It's always going to be a provider. The Most High always going to make a way for us, right? I'm going to read this real quick. Matthew 6 and um, <clears throat> Matthew six and verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat? And the body more more than raiment. 
Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Hey, that's funny, too. It says, uh, uh, which of you take thought can add one cubit to his stature? Because I know a lot of short brothers, they're like, hey, man, if I can just get like three more inches, no, I'll be good. <laughs> Verse 28. <clears throat> and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in his in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father, <clears throat> for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, to, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So guess what? Some people take that scripture right there. Some people take that scripture and they say, hey, I don't really have to prepare. You know, I'm good. What's I going to prepare for me? That definitely is not what that's saying. It's saying that don't worry. You just do the things written. You do the things that's written and the most high going to make a way. He, that that scripture is not saying just... Go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and just do 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 do. do. I'm hungry. Hmm. Ah, burrito right there. No, that's not what it's talking about. It's saying do the things that's written in the Bible. Do the things that I'm telling you what to do, right? And guess what? I'll make I'll make a way. If you do what's what's required of you, I'm gonna make a way, right? Because a lot of us have faith that the Most High will provide these things. Guess what? He can provide these things to the righteous. He can provide these things to the ones that's in his word and that's following his word and taking heed to his word. Just like we read early about um, by him, actions are weighed, right? So it's got to be an action. It's got to be something that you have to do. You have to do something. You can't just sit back and be faith only, right? Um Let's see. Uh, matter of fact, James chapter two, verse 17. James two and 17, it says, even so faith. If it have not works is dead being alone. Guess what? We we heard about this in the Christian church. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And you tell a Christian you got to keep the commandments and they go, no, we got to have faith. And you're like, well, what about this scripture that say faith without works is dead? They like. That ain't what that means, right? Hey, Christianity is crack. It is what it is. It's worse than crack, right? Because crackheads know they on crack. Christians don't know they on crack. You know, they have no idea that they on crack, but they on crack. All right. So, um, and uh, you know, I did a class in Memphis one time called the Harry Hippie Israelites. A lot of y'all are some Harry Hippie Israelites. It's a it's a song. It's, um, who sing the song? I can't remember. Just type it in YouTube. Harry Hippie. It'll come up. A lot of y'all are hairy, hippie Israelites, meaning y'all just floating alone, right? You just, oh, yeah, you know, don't worry. Somebody going to get fix it for me. You know, all I got to do is just say I'm hungry. Somebody going to give me some food. Uh, you know what? You know, I'm not making a lot of money in my job. You know, don't worry. Somebody going to help me. I can just come to the school. They'll help me out. This, that, this, and that. Some of y'all are some hairy, hippie Israelites. And guess what? That ain't right. That ain't the way to be. The scriptures say you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. You should be doing things, guess what? To, to where, yeah, Bobby Womack, all praises. Bobby Womack. I like that song. I would sing it, but I, I you know, we got 245 people on. If I start singing, it'll drop down to 30, you know, so I ain't going to sing it. <laughs> all praises. But, you know, um, 
some of y'all are like that. And you really putting a, a burden, you putting a burden on other people, right? You putting a burden on other people, right? So, <clears throat> you know, we talk about preparing, you know, stocking up, you know, and things like that, right? So we talking about the things that happen in the future, what we should be doing, right? But some of y'all hairy hippie Israelites, some of y'all have issues with just this. We talking about the next level of getting ourselves together, right? But some of y'all have problems with just this part. Yes, it's a you uh, can't have you can't help hair when you're sleeping on the ground. Like it's brothers and sisters in the body that you want to help, but they they don't even want to they don't want to sleep inside a house. They you know. They want to sleep on the ground. They don't mind. Look, it's a good song. Listen to the song. Don't be a hairy hippie Israelite. All right. I think I may do the class again or whatnot. But uh, don't be a hairy hippie Israelite. But some, you know, we talk about, like I said, setting up for the for the uh, turmoil to come, the insurrections to come. Some brothers and sisters have issues with just this simple stuff. Right. Uh, this is a book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty nine. And verse 21, right? Sirach 29, 21. It says, the chief things for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame, right? Some people have issues with just keeping up with the chief things of life, right? You so much don't care about stuff that, you know, hey, water, what to drink, what to eat, clothes you wear. A house to cover shame. You don't even you don't even have a good lock on those things, right? You don't even have a lock on those things. You don't. You just like it is what it is. Like whatever, I figure it out, right? Um, you know, I ain't gonna say no names, but we had a had a brother. You know, I say how can I make this story to where nobody know what I'm talking about? So a long time ago. <laughs> Had a brother, you know, he uh, he older than me. A brother's old, you know, older than me, right? Older than me, you know. He come and he says, um, you know, he wants he he needs help. You know, he he needs a certain amount of money. Three months back on his on his rent. Three months behind on his on his car note. It's like, okay. Let me see. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I'll get to that story a little later. Let me go through some more of these scriptures, right? Um, it's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 31. Um, just, for, just for a lot of the hairy hippie Israelites, it says, um, and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashions of this world passes away, right? Some of y'all, you know, um, some of y'all get assistance, right? get government assistance or whatever, things like that, right? Where, you know, you, you, you not just using the world, but some of y'all abuse the world. Some of y'all can go and get a job. You know, you can do these things, you can do that. But some of y'all try and game the system. Just understand that that system ain't going to be here. It's not always going to be here. It says for the fashions of this world pass away. It's not always going to be here. It's not going to be there for you. You think that uh, Sleepy Joe care about you. You think that uh, Camila, Camilla, whatever her name is, you think that she care about you. You know, she just became black. She wasn't black before. You know, she was Indian. Now she black because she wanted to get elected. You think they care about you. You think they got stuff set up for you. Guess what? It ain't going to work that way. You know, it's not going to work. The, the fashion of this world pass away. This second Edges chapter eight, uh, verse eleven. It says that thing which is fashion. That's talking about us, right? Talking about Israel. It, says, it may be nourished for a time, till thou um, disposes it to thy mercy, right? And look, at, at one point we are gonna be nourished, like the scriptures in Revelation twelve, right? Revelation twelve fourteen. It says to the woman and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So the scripture says, yeah, we're going to be nourished by uh, 
Esau. We're going to be nourished by the serpent. We're going to be nourished by the nations, right? But guess what? Not forever. It's sooner or later, you're going to be at uh, to the God, to the mercy of the, of the Most High Living God. Like the scripture says that, um, what's what's that? Um, I think it's a, a translation of one of the of one of the titles for the Most High is that I think it was like the demon like power, something like that. I don't know. It's something to that effect. Basically, it ain't good, right? We know about the mercy of the Most High God. We also know about His wrath, right? We read about it, right? So you got to make sure you're not one of them people that's trying to game the system, right? You need to be a, get up on it and try and get yourself together, get your family together, and do things like that, you know, and um, got to make sure we take advantage of the things that's there so we can get on our feet, stand on our own feet, not dependent on somebody else, right? 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. It says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat, right? If you don't work, the scripture says you shouldn't eat, right? Some of y'all, some of y'all hairy hippie Israelites, you know, y'all sitting back, y'all got them checks from the government, y'all still trying to figure out how to get more checks, more checks, more checks. Some of y'all dependent, y'all trying to depend on this, depend on that. You know, it ain't going to, in that, in that day, you ain't going to be able to depend on it. Some of y'all live, live on a level right above the poverty level, just so you don't have to work, right? Um, you know, y'all stay in certain places. It's like, okay, if I make this much money, then the government going to stop sending me a check. So I make sure I can't get a real good job. Let me get a little job. You know, y'all trying to game the system and live a certain type of way and you ain't able to prepare, you know, and you dependent on the government. And guess what? When the government stop, guess who you're going to be dependent on? You're going to be dependent on your brothers and sisters, right? You're going to be dependent on your brothers and sisters to help you. They to with brothers that's trying to do all they can to be prepared for themselves. They got to prepare for you because you a hairy hippie Israelite, right? Um you trying to abuse the system. You think you're going to be nourished by the system forever. It ain't going to happen that way. You ain't going to be nourished by the system forever. And if you're that type of person, guess what? You don't love your neighbor as yourself. You don't. You don't because you you dependent on them. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let's see. This first Timothy chapter five, verse eight. That's right. It's a real selfish spirit. It's a selfish spirit. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight. And it's a lot. Look, I'm telling you, you know, I, I had this conversations with a lot of brothers and it's, it's a lot of brothers in this truth that have all the ability, but they work security jobs where they make minimum wage or maybe a dollar over minimum wage or whatnot. They work, um, you know, some sisters, they, you know, they, they don't want to go. They don't. It's Look, you the greatest people on this planet. You're the greatest people on this planet, right? They got jobs paying $40 an hour. Guess what? It's, it's for you. You know, the most high is he, like the scripture says, don't be worried about that. He going to provide a way. Guess what? It's a $40 an hour job out there waiting for somebody to go get it. We smarter than everybody. We done worked harder than everybody. It is what it is. You may have to deal with Esau. You may have to, you're going to deal with Esau no matter what. Some of y'all be like, I ain't trying to work that kind of job because I don't want to deal with Esau, this, that, this, and that. Okay, whatever. Don't do it then. Why, you know, don't do it. Why, you don't have enough money to prepare for yourself. Somebody else that got to deal with Esau talking crazy or being stupid, you know, they stock room full. You got to change your mindset. We wouldn't sit, we wouldn't, we're not here to be comfortable. This, like the scripture says, this is not our rest. We're not here to live it up and be comfortable. We got to be uncomfortable, right? We got to move with fear. We got to be, we, we, we can't be like, you can't have that mindset. I ain't trying to help you. Saw tell me what to do. I'd rather work the security job while I sit back and I can read and study all day and night. And I, and I get paid, you know, I get paid $7 an hour. I'll be like, look, 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 they got little kids that make more money than you. You know, what's, what's the problem? What's, what's wrong? It's like uh, what Sister Tabitha just said. Some just want to be a bum. 
Some people just want to be a bum. Harry hippie Israelites. Guess what? In that day, y'all going to have a problem, right? So uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says, but if any provide not for his son, for I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and it's worse than an infidel. Let's break that down, right? It says, provide not for his own. Let's talk about being there, provide for your nation, right? Some of y'all, you can't even provide for your own house, right? And look, I know, now listen, I don't want to say like I'm insensitive. I know that they have brothers and sisters that's trying and they can't. They got brothers and sisters. They got certain uh, extenuating situations to where they can't do it right now, right? And I ain't talking about y'all. But, you know, fight to get out of that, that spot to where you can get in a better spot, right? Because um, as Christ even said it, we read it all the time. Uh, every time we go to leave from camp, Matthew 26, where it says, um, we're going to have the poor. The poor always going to be with us, but him not always. So we know it's always going to be the poor amongst us. That's why the scripture right here in 1 Timothy says, but if any provide not for his own, meaning his own people, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the fate and is worse than an infidel, right? Worse than another nation, a non-believer, right? Worse than that. So guess what? You got to be able to prepare yourself to take care of those brothers and sisters that really need help and take care of your own house. But if you're just sitting back where well, you you got this job and you, I, I like this job because, you know, I don't have to do nothing. Right. The scripture says, look, we're going at the sweat of our brow shall we eat bread. Right. It's we're going we're gonna, you know, it is what it is. Right. And you may look, it may be some people like you may it may be a brother that got this computer job where he sit down. He don't do nothing all day. Right. But he make a lot of money. The most high set them people up to do what? To be able to help other people. And I hope I pray and hope that you brothers and sisters that's in that situation. Oh, man, I have my fingers like this. They're going to say. This means something. Witchcraft. <laughs> Let me stop. But you brothers and sisters, right, that's in these positions that that make a lot of money, that got plus jobs where you don't have to do much. Guess what you should be doing? You better be willing to help your brothers and sisters. Right. You better be willing to do that. You better be like it says, um, you know, you can't lay up your money just so it can right away. You better be willing to help your brothers and sisters and you better be putting in the work. You got spare time. You, you, you free. You don't have to be uh, under the, uh, the ax of Esau all day. His foot ain't on your neck all day. Guess what you should be doing? You should be putting in mad work, right? We should, you should be uh, make sure you're studying, you know, teaching classes, right? Uh, help building up your brothers and sisters, right? We've got all kinds of things that we need in the body. Guess what? We should be able to look to you, you know, to be your brother's keeper, uh, to be your sister's keeper. We should be able to look to you. We we should you should be bugging us, right? Hey, hey, hey! I got free time. I, I what what you need me to do? I need help. I need help. I need what you need. You want me to help you this? You want me to learn how to edit videos? You know, you need you want me to be over the cleaning team. You want me to be over this? You want me to help figure out how to prep? You, I'm good with. Uh, charts and graphs. Hey, you want me to help with that? Cause I, look, I ain't good with charts and graphs. They'd be like, "Hey, put this together." I'd be like, "Dang, I need somebody to help me do this." I, ain't, I ain't good with that. You know, I'd be like, "Hey, wife, here, do this Excel sheet." <laughs> but I'm telling you, if if you're a person that's blessed in that way, you definitely should be helping, right? You definitely should be helping. We look at that arm sheet. Some of y'all brothers be. You know, be talking about what y'all got and this, that, this, and that. You look at that arm sheet, you see ten dollars, twenty dollars. Be like, don't worry, the most high, I take it all away from you at a snap of a finger. I better make sure y'all doing what's right, um, in the in the eyes of the Lord, right? But um, where was I at? First Timothy five and eight, right? So um, this is the book of Sirach, Sirach chapter forty and verse twenty eight, right? Sirach chapter 40 and verse 28. It says, my son, lead not a beggar's life, for better is it to die than to beg. Better is to die 
than is to beg. Look, being, being a beggar ain't a good thing, right? It says it's better to die than to beg, right? Don't put yourself in a position to where you lead a beggar's life. And listen, and I hear this all the time when, when brothers come or sisters come and they two months, three months, four months behind their bills, about to get evicted. I need the money today. I'm about to get kicked out. Yeah, they're about to take my car. I'm hiding at my grandma's house. This and that, this and that. I'm like, why didn't you come say something sooner? Pride. What? I'll be ready to punch people in the face when they say that. I'll be ready to just slap somebody. What you mean, pride? I, you know what? what what's, a, what's that group? They said, I ain't too proud to beg. Look, <laughs> pride for what? It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. If you don't pay your bills, they're going to take your car from you. If you don't pay your rent, they're going to kick you out the house sooner or later. It's going to happen. You know, I'd rather have pride and be able to um, – hold on. Okay. I'd rather have uh, – I'd rather not be prideful and be able to um, – Living to live, be still living in my house and still being able to drive uh, my automobile so I can go to work and stuff like that, than to be out on the street. If you prideful, then guess what? You don't want to live on the street. You don't want to live in the uh, in a shelter. If you got pride, that's why I be thinking it's just BS. It's that that mindset that somebody else is gonna take care of me. And you like if I wait to when it's real bad. Then, then, then I know they gotta help me, right? Because if I come right now, they are gonna say, "Well, what about this and what about that?" Right? Just like a, a, a situation I'm, I'm, you know, um, talking about that happened a long time ago. <laughs> you know, brother, three months behind on his rent, three months behind on his um, car note, right? And now he need a lot of money from the body to get to get it fixed. And I'm like, why didn't you come earlier? He's like. I was just prideful. Like you didn't know that you don't make enough money to take care of these things. Uh, you know, I was prideful, you know. You know, then it's like, wait a minute. Didn't you buy a, a feast day garment? Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you come to the you was at the Passover? Yeah. I'm like, you don't care about your people. Right. Just like what it said in First Timothy, if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own household, he has denied the fate and is worse than an infidel. You got brothers and sisters that didn't come to the Passover because they don't have money. They're like, I got to take care of my bills. I got to feed my kids. Right. I got to keep my automobile going. I got to pay for this super high gas. I got to pay for all these things. I really want to go to Orlando. I really want to go to Mississippi. I really wanted to go to the Carolinas. I really wanted to go to, um, what was that? To, um, I think Arizona. I think it was Arizona. It's like, I really want to go to this thing, right? But I didn't. I, I, you know, I didn't go because I know I had to provide for my own house. Some of y'all, Harry Hippie, just floating on alone with the kid mindset that somebody else going to take care of me. Somebody else going to take care of me. It ain't right. It says, uh, Sirach 40, verse 28. It says, my son, lead not a beggar's life. For better is it to die than to beg. <laughs> the scriptures say, just, you know, it's better to die than to beg. Now, ain't, then, now, don't nobody get it twisted. Ain't nobody telling nobody to go kill themselves. I'm telling you to get better. I'm telling you to get better, to wake up, right? To wake up. To put off the childish things, to put away that childish mindset, right? It says, um, verse 29, it says, The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. For he polluted himself with other men's meat, but a wise man well nurtured will beware thereof. Scripture is telling us, look, get away from people like that. You don't need to be around people like that. It's not good. And it's saying that that man's life ain't worth it. It says you depending on another man's table. You, you, you up here working. You know, I always talk about this story or whatnot, you know, that um, when, you know, me and my, my wife, we both work, we both work, wake up every day 
you know, work, work, work. Ever since I was 17, I had a job straight to now, always working my real, working hard, you know, um, school. She was at, in school and working, you know, full time student, full time job, job, work, 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 work. Right. And, you know, I realized that we, you know, we help people out, you know, help our family members out and stuff like that. And, you know, me, I want I want to ride lawnmower. I wanted to ride lawnmower. Why not? When I was a kid, I had to push the lawnmower. My brother used to act like his chest was hurting. So I had to mow the backyard, which was huge. And he had to mow the front yard. And I'm like, hey, he, you know, he he older now. Can I can I mow the backyard, the front yard? And he mowed the back. He's like, it's hard, my chest. I'll be like, bruh. <laughs> so you know what I got? And then as soon as we I moved out, my, my father, he bought a self-prepared lawnmower. Right. Oh, he now now he got a ride lawnmower. So guess what? I want a ride lawnmower. I'm like, I ain't trying to push this lawn. I got a big yard, you know, you know, but guess what? You know, my my rib, she got that better finance mindset than me. Like I said, if if it was me, we'd, you know, you know, I wouldn't have a house. I probably I have a little house and a real nice car. <laughs> all right. But all praises, all praises for a, a virtuous wife, a real help me. You know, they get you right, you know, vice versa. So, you know, I want to lie no more. It's like, well, we can't really afford one right now. I'm like, what you mean we can't afford one right now? We got money, right? But we helping out other people in the family. And I remember we went to um, a family member's house and her husband was talking to me, he would go out back. And he like, yeah, man, look, I just got this ride lawnmower. I was like, you got a ride lawnmower? The hell? Don't, don't y'all owe us money? <laughs> I said, I, well, I went to my rib. I said, hey, we're gonna buy a ride lawnmower when we get back, when we get back home. He's like, well, no, I thought we talked about this. I said, look, I go to work every day. I am not going to work every day so somebody else can have a ride lawnmower and I gotta push the yard. Not having it, right? I was pissed. I was mad. I was like, I'm buying a lawnmower, I'm buying a trailer, you know, I'm getting everything, right? <laughs> but uh you know, I didn't do it. I was just, I was just woofing. I was mad at the time. But like the scripture said, it says, "The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for a life." You can't even count that person for a life. It said, "For he polluted himself with other man's meat." You got a man waking up, working every day, coming home, dealing with Esau. He tired. Then he's trying to deal with his wife. He's trying to deal with his kids. Trying to do the work of the Lord while you sitting back not doing nothing, and then. Hoping that he pay alms so you can take advantage of that. Scripture says that that life ain't to be counted for a life. You ain't worth nothing. You know, like my, my auntie Juanita Nita used to say, she was like, you ain't worth a dime. You ain't worth a nickel. You know, she'd be like, you gonna come cut my grass? He's like, you gonna come, you gonna come cut my grass or whatnot? He was like, you ain't worth nothing, right? And I'll be like, you gotta take the proper steps to get yourself in a better situation. You can't sit back. You know, the, these things written in the Bible for a reason. It's written in the Bible for a reason. So we don't live these type of lives, lives right? We got to take heed. We got to take heed, right? You know, some people may get offended by this, but it is what it is. It is what it is. You, is this what the Bible say? You can't get offended by the scriptures, right? Um, it's, uh, this is Sirach chapter 29, verse 7. It says, many therefore have refused to lend for other men's ill dealings, fearing to be defrauded. Some people, you'll have brothers that be like, you know what? I could give this much to the body, but, you know, I see this sister doing this, this brother doing that. They ain't preparing. They don't care. You know what? I ain't giving nothing, right? That's not a good mindset to have either because guess what? We supposed to be taking care of the brothers and sisters that need help, that need assistance, that are not able to do certain things, right? That's not able to be prepared. That's not able to work. There's some people that ain't able to do these things, but some people that's able, and guess what? They live the hairy hippie life, right? And guess what? That's a selfish way to be. Selfish, right? So 
A lot of people don't understand that their actions affect the spirit of their brothers and sisters, right? So guess what? We like like this class, look, hey, I probably could keep going on. I've been going on for a while. Look, we got to put away childish things. We got to grow up, right? Uh, I think one of the brothers got a song, man up, man up. It's time to man up, right? Time to woman, the woman, man up too, or whatever they say. Put your big girl panties on. I think that's the that's the equivalent, equivalent to man up on that side, right? So, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to end right there. I'll praise to the most high. Um, I hope I hope y'all got something out of the class. I hope brothers and sisters that may be um, living that way, that they got something out of the class, that they, they realize that, hey, look, I got to fix me. I got to fix me. I got to fix the things in me so I can be better, right? And look, some people need to hear these type of things, right? And hey, look, if I'm talking about you, don't be offended. Guess what? Because you ain't the only one that's doing this. And you ain't the, your story ain't the only story. And I got many stories of this exact same thing. So don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. And and guess what? If if I am talking about you, yeah, I am talking about you. It is what it is. Fix yourself. Change. Right? Examine yourself, whether you're being the truth. All right? So let me see. Okay. Um, I got it. Okay, so make sure hey, I think somebody posted in the um, the, the section, the, the prepping team, you know, hey, look, subscri hey, subscribe to the prepping team. They got some good videos. I don't know who these guys are. <laughs> I don't know these people, but, you know, I think they uh, they got some good videos. Right. Uh, do what you can, you know, uh, pay attention. Um, hey, look, hey, I'm going to do I'm going to do like the, um, the bishops and the. Uh, and the deacons do. Uh, hey, look, be sure to subscribe to IUIC Birmingham. IUIC Birmingham. Subscribe. You get some more classes like this uh, to come. Um, you know what I'm saying? And um, look, study, pray, and apply, right? Or, or, or some people say study, prepare, and apply, right? So, hey, y'all praise to the most high. Um I'll pray to the most high and I'm going to go ahead and end the class. All right. I don't know how.